Hey everyone, welcome back to Sword of Mana. In the last episode, we went through the Ruined Passage en route to Dime Tower, and now we are inside of the Dime Tower, and we have some very ominous music going on in the background. Oh, you know shit got real when the music starts getting like this. Oh boy. So, anyway, um, I also was talking last time about how, um, you know, I want to provide more consistent uploads for you guys, but, um, well, hang on a sec, because there's a scene right here, so. I will talk about the scene, and then I will talk about what I have to talk about, so. Hmm, that's a weird looking glyph. I wonder, can we read it? Sibba's Dime Tower. I didn't know he owned the place. Better tread carefully. If I don't, he's going to shove some sacred light up my ass. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> She's putting you in your place, Duke. Yeah, really. Okay. Um, I guess we'll go underground, then. Are we splitting up? No, Elena! I need you! I don't really need you in battle, but I need you for moral support! Oh, well. There she goes. A code, huh? Hmm. Well, we can't read it right now. So, I guess the only thing left to do now is to check below ground. So let's head... Let me see here. Do I want to go this way? Yeah, this is the only way to go. What am I talking about? Okay. Well, let's look down here. Oh. There's a wall there. Great. What in the heck are those? Hmm. That's odd. Okay. I guess they don't do anything. Let's head up here first and grab this treasure chest. A chuck-a-lump. Awesome. Hmm. Well, there's no place for us to go. Belo uh, right now. Ow, those are spikes. Never mind. Below ground. But what is this red thing here? Hmm. What is this thing? Whoa! Uh... I think it turned on. Ow. Oh, look, the door's open. Awesome. Let's see what's in here. A bunch of corpses. Ew. But they're not, like, corpses, though. They're, like, robot corpses. Oh my god, one of them's alive. Um, I come in peace. Please don't fire your laser at me. Friends. Um, yeah, yes, yes, friends, friends. I'm your friend. I'm not an enemy. Please don't vaporize me. Apparently so. Yeah, don't call any monsters on me. I might have to chop them down. Uh, you all right there, dude? alone oh wow yeah I would imagine nobody's been here for probably 20 years wow suddenly I feel like a very bad person for thinking he was evil oh no those are all of his friends in piles there apparently they stopped working a while ago Yeah, yeah, we're friends. We both move, so we're friends. Oh, I'm I'm terribly sorry. I didn't mean it like that. Please don't kill me. Yeah, friends. It, it's kind of weird that he, you know, has emotions, but um, I suppose if he's a weapon, like, uh, if he, since this whole place is a weapon, he might be part of it. I suppose if he's a weapon... Then he relies on mana power, which gives emotion and life to all things, so... I suppose there is that. And his name is Marshall! Awesome. Yes, friends are good, aren't they? And so, we get the final new party member to join our party in the game. Marshall the Warbot. Who is, actually, my favorite partner in the entire game. Simply because it's Marshall. 
Look at that guy. He's a robot. When he runs, he uses jets on his back to run. Look at look at him. Look at him go. Look at him. He's crazy. And when he attacks in battle, he uses a laser beam to attack, which um unlike most um pretty much all weapons in the game, it ignores any enemy resistances to weaponry. So if you're going against like well, there are certain enemies in the area, like as you can see, he has no weapon um, specialty or magic specialty. All he has is his laser. His stats are pretty godly, by the way, especially considering he doesn't have, say, the brownie ring, which makes me more godly than him, but he's pretty damn good. Um, so if you're going against, say, like, if you may remember, there's was those specters, I think they're called, earlier in the game that don't have take any damage from weaponry. Uh, his laser can actually do pretty well against them because they don't take any damage from pretty much anything else unless you're using magic. So if you're primarily a melee specialist and you don't like using magic, Marshall can be pretty helpful for you if you want to kill the monsters in here. So anyway, let's take a look at this glyph. See if, uh, since Marshall lives here, he might know how to decipher it. What do you think, sir? What's the diagnosis, doctor? Ah, right. Basically, Dime Tower served as like a um, liaison between Sanctuary and the real world, because um, Sanctuary uh, was the provider of mana power, and the real world didn't really have a, uh, mana power in it, because all of the spirits were originally inside of Sanctuary, watching over the world. Because Dime Tower was used as a weapon, the spirits were scattered all over the world during the Vandal, the Age of Darkness and the Vandal Empire was around. Pow wow 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 wow. I think he's having a uh, syntax error there. Yeah, seriously, this is terrible. Because using mana power as a weapon is a bad thing? Damn, Duke. Don't get so angry. Seriously. That's what we've been fighting against the whole game. Well, I didn't say that, but... This is a conundrum, isn't it? We're using a partner who relies on mana power as a weapon. But he's on our side. Isn't he? I guess we'll find out later on. So anyway, this place is a pretty big maze, so I don't really want to... I want to make sure that I know where I'm going before I actually go here. Um, and there's a bunch of puzzle solving in this ma in this mazy area as well, so that's pretty nice. Um, you don't very often with this game. Oops! Get out of here! I must have hit that thing in the middle there on accident. Well, let's take a look at this. Oh, there's another code. What do you think, Marshall? Even though you're way over there. Okay, what does it say? A nature spirit knocks three times. Well, basically, well, basically, what you're supposed to do is this eye glyph here, and there's that red light above it. You're supposed to hit it three times, like I tried to do when I was trying to hit this guy, these dowel things. Um, and when you hit it the third time, that light will go on, and it will open the way to a new area here. Um, so that it's it's kind of puzzle solving. It it makes you think a little bit more than most of the game. So. That's pretty nice. Um, hmm, where do I want to go here? Okay, I want to go up this way. Um, so anyway, I was talking about um, before how I wanted to provide more consistent uploading. See, as you can see, Marshall uses that laser to attack. It's very slow laser. He takes a lot of time to recover from it, but it's also very good if you don't have any magic proficiency because I mean if your wisp levels aren't high aren't pretty high in here that or well your magic levels aren't very high you'll be doing like one or two damage to these guys because they have such high magic resistance well if you have the brownie ring it'll be doing a lot more but uh, I suppose that doesn't matter let us see here okay this one needs to be hit five times in order for it to work I think I already hit it once Nope, I guess not. Um, so it needs to be hit five times to work. And um, this one needs to be hit once. So there, now it's working. And you'll be able to tell when it's working because it'll turn red. So that's pretty nice. 
Um, so I was talking about how I wanted to provide more consistent uploading to you um, in order to kind of provide not only for you guys but also to provide as the voice narrating over the top of these games because they have a voice of their own but the commentary makes it feel a little more personal and I think that's what people kind of enjoy in this and if I'm not providing consistent uploads I feel like I'm not providing enough for you guys that um, in order to you know be a decent uploader here on YouTube so I want to be the narrator more essentially Speaking of narration, I have another very small commentary rant to talk about here because I don't want to be taking too much time about this. So now down there are the two glyphs that we already hit, and up here is where you would get the hint about them, right here. Three nature spirit siblings who don't get along well. The eldest once, the second five times, the sister three times. This is how they knock on doors. You know, how are you supposed to know well, how old or young or whatever they are? Well, basically, it's trial and error. Just hit them until they glow red and you'll be good. So this one we need to hit three times. Because this is the sister, and that opens the way to the top, towards the top of the tower here. Periodically, when you're going through these puzzles, you will find mana statues to save at in case you feel like quitting out. Because this is a long tower. It's actually, I think I'm already up to 12 minutes now, and... Uh, I'm only on the third floor. Well, fourth floor now, but, uh, whatever. Hmm, that's odd. There's nothing going on. What does this say? As you reach the top, a mean wind spirit blows you back down. What is that supposed to mean? Huh. Don't stand on it, Marshall. Okay. Well, basically, you don't want to go down there yet, because if you go down there, well, it won't end well for you. So first, before we head down there, let me grab the treasure over here. Come back this way. Ow. Come back this way and grab this treasure right here as well. This is the only way that you can get both of these treasure chests because when you walk down here... Whoa! The tower's collapsing! Yeah, if you walk down here... Um, the tower actually, the bottom of the tower that you just came from actually collapses and you cannot go down there ever again. This is why you wanted to get all those side quests out of the way before coming here. I'm afraid of that lava plume. There we go. Just let it go and then move on. Living swords again? I thought they were hard, I thought they were enough of a burden in Grand's Castle. Anyway, um,. So you want to take care of all of your side quests before you got here, because if you didn't, well, you can't do them anymore. So, um, speaking of narrating, the commentary rant that I wanted to talk about is... It's a small rant compared to the 49-minute one that uh, I did before. As you can see, I'm not doing any damage to, the, to these guys, which is kind of bad, because, well, those are the guys that Marshall's laser would work on the best, because... Well, they're, they don't take any damage whatsoever from the uh, physical attacks, so I'm going to have to use magic in order to get them out of here. Where am I again, exactly? Oh, look. I'm not on the right uh, map here. Bum, 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 bum. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Okay, I know where to go. Um, so, the little thing that I wanted to talk about about commentary that I've noticed... Well, I've been noticing pretty much a lot recently, is that um, a lot of commentators on YouTube, well, a lot of the ones that I watch, um, have some problems with stuff when there's like voice acting in the games. Um, they have problems with when to talk over it and when to not talk over it, because it's kind of a finely drawn line um, when you should talk over top of people who are speaking, because you don't know if you're going to miss something important or talk over something important that is um, necessary for the uh, viewers to know in order to, for them to provide, in order for you to provide the best experience they can get out of the game. I'm afraid of that lava plume. Again, I hate those things. They're more dangerous than the enemies around here. Um, so you don't know what, exactly when you should provide and when you shouldn't um, provide for your audience. Did I get all the treasure in here? In this room. Yeah, I did. Okay, let's move on then. After I wait for the lava plume to almost kill me. I hate the lava plumes because if they hit you at all, you'll be burned. And you don't want to be burned because, uh, well, then you can't do anything. So, um, one of the, so one of the basic things that they do 
um, is they don't really speak up when there's important things going on in the story because, well, they feel, I can understand why they don't, because they feel like they um, will be going over, they'll be talking over top of something important, which is bad, um, because, well, you don't want to be talking over something important. If it's that important, then if you talk over it, then it might be missed by some viewers, and then <clears throat> people might not be able to follow along as well, and it's a lot of that stuff, so um, you don't want to you know, talk over stuff too much. Let's see here. There's something over there, but I'm going over there anyway in a minute. So what you want to do here is you want to hit... That's a bash trait meta ball in front of me, so you want to hit it with the mace, because it's the only long-range one, so... There's that. That's out of the way. Um, and the hint tells you basically how to handle this. You hit both of them, and the door over here will open. That wasn't opened before, but now it is, so... <clears throat> 